Welcome back to the David Pakman Show. Joining me are two previous guests on the show. First, we have former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt. His website is PrayInJesusName.org. We also have Wayne Besson, Executive Director of Truth Wins Out. You can find out more at TruthWinsOut.org. Now, I think to kind of set the stage, uh, Chaplain, you've on the program a number of times discussed what you believe to be legitimate ways of getting rid of the sin of homosexuality, something that you believe to be a choice people make. Wayne, numerous times you've indicated that you believe so-called reparative therapies and, and quitting homosexuality are patently absurd and, and scientifically uh, uh, baseless. Let's start with, uh, with the chaplain. Uh, uh, chaplain, please give us a sense of your view of this idea of when someone becomes or chooses to be homosexual and the ways that someone might be able to rid themselves of that uh, lifestyle, per se. Sure. Well, I'm a chaplain, of course. I'm an ordained minister, a Pentecostal who believes in the Bible, who believes in Jesus Christ. And it says in 1 John 1, 9, that if we will confess our sins, that God is faithful and just, and he will forgive us, but he will also cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So there are any number of sins. For example, in my own life, uh, at one time I was filled with uh, jealousy or uh, alcoholism or different uh, character flaws that I had in my life. And through personal repentance and healing, when Jesus moves into our hearts and becomes our Lord and Savior, he is able to save us from and, and forgive us of any of number of sins, uh, perhaps the least of which is homosexuality. I don't think that's the worst sin by any means. Okay, but logistically, before I give Wayne before I give Wayne a chance to answer, logistically that can be done through, I mean, you've talked about doing gay and lesbian exorcisms. Do you believe that that is legitimate? Yes. Uh, when uh, I was a Navy chaplain, I had a lesbian... Uh, she was very sincere. She wanted to get rid of this personal flaw in her own life. And we prayed, and she gave her life to Jesus Christ. And when the Holy Spirit moved into her, and she gave permission, we were able to command the devil to depart from her. And there was an exorcism, after which she received healing, and she uh, began dating members of the opposite sex. So there was complete repentance, complete healing, and there okay. was hope and forgiveness of sin in Jesus Christ. Wayne, give us your sense of, do you think that these, these exorcisms are valid, first of all, and what's your reaction to what the chaplain is saying? Well, first of all, I just want to say that those who are LGBT are fine just the way they are, and you cannot pray away to gay. What I think he's talking about is absurd. You know, people who go through individuals like that come to me afterwards to pick up the pieces of their shattered lives. They're not healed. They're harmed by such uh, voodoo, so to speak. This isn't Christianity. This is some kind of cult-like, bizarre uh, notion that has nothing to do with real religion, but has something to do with radicalism and extremism. And unfortunately, uh, you know, it's, it comes to people like me after the damage is done in such groups to to lift people's self-esteem and lift them off the ground and say, you know what, you're fine, you're okay. And uh, it, it just breaks my heart to see how many people are damaged in the name of religion. Uh, through crackpot programs like this. Before I give, of course I will give the chaplain the opportunity to respond, but specifically, what do you think is happening, Wayne, when the chaplain cites the story of this lesbian who, after the exorcism, uh, claimed to no longer be a lesbian? What's your, what, how do you respond to that? Well, clearly this lesbian was led and grown up to believe there was something wrong with her, that she was broken, when in fact there was nothing wrong with her. And I think when you have uh, what we saw in this exorcism is uh, deeper shame. You're instilling deeper shame and making somebody feel so horrible about themselves that they'll submit to such quackery. Uh, the long term, this lesbian will come back out of the closet if she's not already, and she will condemn that action as incredibly damaging to her psyche. And, 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 and if she survives it, I mean, this drives some people to suicide because they feel so horrible about themselves. The best thing people can do is just accept themselves for who they are, come out of the closet, and live a healthy, rich, and fulfilling life without all this kind of religious fundamentalist baggage that, that damages so many people. Chaplain, uh, go ahead. Sure. Well, um, there is forgiveness of sins in Jesus Christ. It's a removal of the shame that was already there before I ever met the woman. 
and she feels uh, lifted. When, she, when the tears came down her face, she felt elevated and full of joy and love toward God for the first time in her life. So there is hope and healing. Not only that, but there are scientific studies that prove that reparative therapy, or uh, which I don't practice, by the way, I'm not a psychologist, but the, the scientific studies, for example, by Robert Spitzer confirm <laughs> Uh, predominantly homosexual orientation will, in some individuals, respond to therapy. Uh, he had over 200 respondents in both genders, 143 males and 57 females, who report changes from homosexual to heterosexual orientation lasting five years or more. So there is hope and there is healing in these studies. And uh, under the teaching of Dr. Joseph Nicolosi, who's a respected psychologist who formed uh, the NARTH organization, there is an entire cadre of psychologist. I just talked to one, uh, David Pickup in California, who reports a 60 to 70 percent healing rate for people who come to him to get rid of the shame in their lives, and they are converted from homosexuality to heterosexuality by other means. Most often, they just come through faith in Jesus Christ. I have a list of uh, well, okay, let's, I mean, we've gotten quite a list from you already, Chaplain. Let's, I want to give Wayne Besson a chance to respond to at least, to at least the, to the first two individuals you mentioned. Oh, come on, chap. You're making it too easy for me here. I mean, you mentioned Dr. Robert Spitzer. Uh, he just came out a few weeks ago and renounced his study and said it was bogus. In fact, I personally went to his house in Princeton, New Jersey and interviewed him, and he told me to tell people like you to stop using his study. We have a video of him telling people like you, stop using my study, yet you're using his study. Uh, I'll be happy to send you that so you can no longer distort his work. Uh, furthermore, Dr. Nicolosi went to a strip mall college and is completely discredited. He's somebody who believes, for example, that uh, straight people can become gay if they suffer defeat or failure. He's somebody uh, who believes you should take people as young as three years old into reparative therapy. Uh, this is somebody who is really discredited and uh, every respected medical and mental health organization says attempts to change sexual orientation are harmful. The American Psychiatric Association even says that attempts to change can lead to anxiety, uh, depression, and self-destructive behavior. As that's certainly not the kind of uh, results we want through mental health, and that's exactly what you're promoting. And I, I, and imagine again, I'll, I'll end with David Pickup. We've yet to see a single success story from Mr. Pickup. It seems that all he wants to do is market his products and sell you know, his little workout and, and other products, but he certainly hasn't shown any success to anybody so far. Uh, so his, his results are laughable at best. A touch on. Uh, I mean, Gordon, I want to I wanna go to you and, and ask you, as a former Navy chaplain and as somebody who has performed these gay exorcisms, could you take anybody, could you take Wayne Besson and perform an exorcism where he would no longer be gay? Is that within your purview? Well, Wayne would have to repent and he would have to consent. It's an act of his free will to contract with the devil, and it can also be an act of his free will to renounce the devil. And that's a very simple exercise that I lead people in. When they want an exorcism, when they come to me for help, I say, uh, pray with me and repeat these words. Father in heaven, I renounce my sins and demons. I invite holiness and the Holy Spirit. And if Wayne would be willing to do that, then certainly he could find hope and healing. In talking to the former chaplain here, what do you think really is the net effect of these I'm types of exorcisms that he claims to do? I think they're incredibly devastating to people. What it does is it reinforces shame. A lot of LGBT people grow up in very conservative backgrounds. They're told that they're sexually broken, that there's something wrong with them from the time that they can remember from, from childhood. And then they, they feel desperate. They want to be loved. They want to be accepted in society and by their friends and family members. And they have somebody like this who makes a false promise and dangles false hope and promises the carrot of an exorcism when it's really a stick that does amazing psychological harm to these people. Should these exorcisms be illegal in your opinion? I'm tired of cleaning up the messes of people like this who do this kind of quackery, this crackpot ideas, and then they come to me later on when they're lower than an ant's belly because they've been broken down psychologically and they want to become whole again by coming out of the closet. And, and, and of course we, we enjoy helping people live rich and fulfilling lives like this, but it's so sad that they have to go through such processes and, and, and go through this dysfunctional, mean-spirited uh, psychological and religious abuse before they're able to come out. It's very unhealthy. Chaplain, last few seconds we have here, do you believe that children as young as three should be subjected to so-called reparative therapy? I know you don't do it, but do you believe that, that they should be subjected to it? Well, it's a free country. Everyone should be allowed, parents should be allowed to bring their children 
for therapy. But just to counter what Wayne said, uh, there are psychological studies. Just last month, Mark Regnerus came out in the Journal of Social Science Research, and he wrote this. Uh, the, the children of parents who have at some point in their life had a same-sex partner were more likely to be on welfare, have a history of depression, less education, and report a history of sexual abuse. This is a professional psychological study, just like the Spitzer study, which was never countered with new research. It was just politically uh, repented of, I suppose, by Mr. Spitzer. But these scientific studies do oh, So you know more than the doctor Spitzer himself. Abuse children, and Christians ought to rescue those children whenever possible. Okay. Uh, I think we're going to have to leave it there. We've been speaking with former Navy chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt. The website is PrayInJesusName.org. And Wayne Besson, executive director of Truth Wins Out. The website is TruthWinsOut.org. I have a sense that we're not going to be able to agree on too much here other than we've just spent the last few minutes talking to each other. But I thank you both for participating. David, and I hope we don't agree. If that's the case, I need to go to a shrink and get help. <laughs> okay, yeah. we'll take a break and be back with more. Wait, come and confess your sins to me. On the David Packman Show. <laughs> and you to me.